this is Mark Abili with The Art of Diesel, where we are all about diesel and automotive performance, efficiency, and independence. Today I'm going to talk about the turbocharger that I put on Ivana, the turbo diesel. This is a hybrid turbo that came from ECS Tuning Countess, and they've just recently put out a video, I'll link to it below, showing their assembly and testing and adjustment of these turbos. Um, very impressive. Um, they're, they're doing real work. They're not just some fly-by-night operation. They know what they're doing. The thing that you don't get out of their video is a real comparison between the, the stock turbo and their turbo. And so I do side-by-side -side comparisons, take measurements when I disassemble my stock turbo as well as the one I purchased from ECS Tuning Countess. The other thing that I'm going to cover here is the gauge that I put on. I put on a combination boost and EGT gauge and these are important things to monitor when you are driving a modified turbo diesel. You want to make certain your boost is where it ought to be. You want to make sure your EGTs are not getting too high or you're going to start burning pistons, valves and possibly even hurting your turbo in the process. So. Um, so I'm going to show how I tapped into the intake and exhaust in order to get the readings and how I routed the lines in addition to how I connected it and installed it on the dash of my vehicle. So that's what we're going to cover today. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I forget, you might have noticed the cap I'm wearing. I have opened a swag store which will sell Art of Diesel stuff and um, this is the first item we're offering for sale right now. Uh, I will link to where you can get a cap of your own if you want one and over time that swag store will contain more Art of Diesel items that you might be interested in. Thank you for your support. Okay today I'm going to start comparing the two turbos that I have in front of me here. This is the original it was in the E320 CDI. You can see it's kind of grungy. <laughs> Pretty easy to tell which one's the new turbo. This is what started off as the same exact turbo built by ECU Tuning Countess, but it's been modified. It's now a hybrid turbo. Um, the externals look exactly the same. If we roll these around, the dimensions are the same. Everything will bolt right up. Um, the differences to this tur turbo are on the inside. So what I want to do is I want to start examining what those differences are. I'm going to violate the warranty on this by going ahead and popping it apart. So the very first thing that one will notice when you look at these two turbochargers, this one has um, a uh, is a journal bearing turbocharger. I could tell because there's a fair amount of play in the shaft. There always is because they rely on oil pressure to create a film of oil, which becomes really the real bearing. And um, when I take a look at these these compressor blades, they look like normal turbocharger compressor blades. The new turbocharger has billet blades. You can tell because of the machine markings. When I rotate this and you take a look at the surfaces, you can see the mill marks where the blades were machined. And that's how you know this is a billet turbo. Another thing I noticed right away is that these the compressor blades on these turbochargers always come in twos in pairs and so there's a taller blade and a shorter blade back behind it so if i look back in here you can see there's a shorter blade back behind the um the blade that's more forward and uh what you can see is that when you look at this one the the those longer blades go further up into the intake. The air coming from the air filter comes into the turbocharger here and gets compressed by the compressor here. And as we look at the intake, I can see that on this turbo, those blades extend further up into the intake nozzle here than on the stock turbo. Another important thing that I notice it's different is that if we look at the differences on this intake, they are both the same diameter on the outside, right? They need to bolt up to the same things, right? So there's no difference there. And if I look at the diameter across here, that will be the same, right? That's stock, but 
What I'll notice is that there's less of a ramp as this thing necks down. ID is necking down until it gets to this point right here. Now, if I assume the angle is the same on two, this one doesn't neck down nearly as much. It's actually quite a bit wider. So if I put this so it just goes inside of that, and then I compare it to this one, I'll notice that it won't go down in there. So the ID of this, uh, where the compressor intake is, um, is actually a little bit wider right there. So let's measure that. Then I'm at 1.872. We're at one point seven seven three seven seven three inches we will look at the maximum diameter of this wheel actually we'll go ahead and measure the actual wheel diameters We'll go tip to tip across these blades, and we'll do that in a couple different places. Let's go tip to tip, measure straight across, and we are at 1.748. And then we'll go ahead and measure at the base. So we are at 2.338. We do have damage right here on one of these um, turbine blades right here. It's gonna be in this neighborhood. One point, one point eight six five ish, and two point two point five roughly in. This is 1.850. Yeah, so here we're at, at 2.687 is what I got a moment ago. Um, Now, if we compare side by side again, it's not just that this is a newer turbine wheel, but uh, you can see that the dimensions are a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and measure those. It's going to be in this neighborhood 1.925. You can see this geometry is a little more different down at the base. Right about there, we're at about 2.015. Yeah, okay. That's it. Here we are at about 1.870. I created this table in order to compare the two turbochargers, the stock and the hybrid turbos, based on measurements I took. But 
I also looked up what the measurements are off ECU Tuning Countess's website. And from that, you might decide that some of my measurements are somewhat suspect, especially the compressor uh, output side. Looks like I was way off. But the bottom line here is when we look at the stock and the hybrid turbos, wheel sizes and intake and exhaust IDs, you can really tell that the differences are only a matter of a few millimeters. This is not a huge radical turbo. However, ECU Tuning Countess will say that they get to 400 horsepower with this and the measurements and the dyno tests are there in order to prove that. So I have to believe that that's true. But the other thing about this that is worth pointing out and the benefit of hybrid turbo like this is if you can reach that sort of horsepower number, if you can get to 400 horsepower with a turbo like this, uh, the huge benefit you're going to get is that you're not going to have hardly any turbo lag because you're sticking to small wheels on the turbo and it should react faster. As you may recall from a previous video when I modified the intake manifold, this plug that I put in uh, got drilled and tapped so I could put in a sensor. This sensor will drive the boost gauge. Of course, I need to do the same thing or something similar with the exhaust in order to look at exhaust gas temperatures. So I drilled and tapped that as well before I put in the turbo in order to attach a uh, Niji T sensor, which in this case would be a thermocouple. That's drilled and tapped. All the chips were vacuumed out and then I was able to put in a fitting and slide the thermocouple in and tighten it down. I've been working on the car here. Intercoolers relocated, headlights I purchased didn't work out so well, and one of the things I'm doing right now while I wait for other parts is I went ahead and put in my gauge. I'll be trying it out in a little bit. One thing you'll note right here, you'll see this is from the EGT sensor, which is connected to the manifold just upstream of the turbo, the exhaust manifold, and it comes back here. And what I've done is I took off this cowl here, removed the wipers, removed this cowl, and I've tucked that wire in so that it comes around and it cuts through this little hole right here. Um, what this hole is, is this is, you can see how the brake fluid reservoir is pinched off here. This hole is what you would use if you had manual transmission. Um, and so there's a hole in the body here, uh, in the firewall here. And so I went ahead and punched a hole in the grommet and I've run the wire through for the EGT and I've done the same for the boost gauge. The boost sensor is right here, screwed in where EGT used to be, where this is a brazed cap that's been put in. And what I did is I followed the existing wiring harness, punched a hole through here. I'll smear some RTV in these holes just to help seal them up. I passed through the exact same hole in the firewall that the EGT sensor wires are. It's hard to see under here but I've removed the panel that goes here as well as a cover that goes around the brake pedal. And it's probably hard to see, but um, up around here, there's an area where you can pull the wires through. And then what I did is I ran them up here. I've removed, I've removed the cluster. Uh, yeah, it's over here. I removed the cluster and what I've done is I routed this through, I drilled a hole and mounted my pod over here. Looks like it's at a weird angle, but it's pointed at where my head will be when I'm driving. And mostly what I'm doing here is I'm connecting up all those cables directly to the gauge over here. Of course, I had to drill a hole and I use a little bit of convoluted tubing there to uh, bridge the gap so I don't just have bare wires out in the open. And the only thing I had to tap into, this is the connector for the instrument cluster. And what I did is I tapped into the uh, ground and switch positive with these little scotch lock jobbers. Some people say you'd never use these, but you know what? 
I've been using them for decades. I've never had any problems with these. And um, but anyhow, these will give power to. So the two the pins I'm really here. after are pins one and pin six, which is right here. Pin one is ground and pin six here is the switch positive those are what i connected to of course how do you find these they're different approaches i tried putting a little piece of wire in there and digging at the wires with the probes but what i wound up doing eventually was while i was working on it i looked at this connector and i saw something useful here which is that i noticed this little snap here is holding this black block in here and i could just go like this and slide it all out then I could see exactly which wires went to ground, which goes to, you know, which is a brown wire, which goes to black for ground on this, which is a pretty normal uh, convention. However, the switch positive, uh, yeah, bless their hearts, Mercedes makes that black. I usually see that as a ground thing, but the switched 12 volts is actually black on this. And I teed off that to power this thing up. Anyhow, and when I'm done, I could just, snap that back in and I'm ready to reinstall my instrument cluster and I'll just plug this right back into it there's plenty of room in here for all of this to tuck up out of the way and um, this makes I did use some zip ties through here just to make sure that everything's clean and that I tugged on all my wires to make sure I made good crimps and um, this this should be good to go. Um, it's nothing critical again. It's just a boost gauge, but I wanted to make sure that um, everything was going to work right. All right, so here's how it looks with the uh, gauge installed. Seems kind of bright. Might be a little too bright. Um, I did turn on the headlights just to see how bright my dash is with those on and yeah this thing's really bright I might need to look at a way to tune it down anyhow from my perspective this is about roughly what I'm seeing and so you can see the pod is it's level it's pointing it at me and if you look in close you'll see that it's starting to show the uh, temperature coming up on the EGT now if I rev the engine I'm really not going to rev the engine enough for you to actually see any boost so we'll have to show that another day when I get the rest of the car put back together and can really do some uh, uh, driving and test runs and find out how much boost this thing is actually putting out with the hybrid turbo I bought from the